Okay, so back over here with Tac Worm City. So we can do the wing and this forward edge and then we'll let that dry and then do the rear, that's the plan. So this stuff again, exactly the same, it's really, really thick. You need to give it a damn good shake to wake this stuff up. Okay, because it is, I'm not joking, I have to take it off here without dripping over model, but you might see, you can see it on here. That's the air pocket. But this stuff is thicker than um, just normal Vallejo paint. It's more like a Citadel. Okay, so exactly the same thing. We're not gonna need tons of this. Thinners goes in first. Okay, and then paint goes in. See, this is the one we've tried before, so it's uh, a little bit thicker. Let me just grab a cocktail stick in here and open up this guy again. See if we can get it to... In fact, it's so stuck in there, I think we're going to have to do it. It's bunged up totally just there. It needs a bit of a clean out, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush full from here. So you can see how thick this stuff is. Okay, so... I think we'll do two brush falls like that. Maybe a bit more beneficial. Okay, so we're doing this worm business. Um, we want it to be dry painting. So I'm going to take three. I.e., you don't want it to be wet and thin, as otherwise it's going to run underneath the actual that off underneath the the worms and you're gonna end up big like watery marks and stuff like that. So it needs to be sprayed quite dry. So for that, what you want is a very nice high air pressure. Okay, and then you're gonna dust it on in little layers, all right? So from our point of view, like we're doing here, we just grab this light bit more here, that's it. As you can see, what we're gonna do is just gonna dust it over the top. So going right over everything, Okay. Just cut into air, dry it back. If it looks wet, then just come off and we'll go somewhere else, okay? To do a touch up in there, it looks like I've made a small mistake. Okay. Now we're not looking for perfection, but what we are looking for is good coverage. Little errors we can deal with ourselves, big errors we can't. Okay, so all of that goes on there like that. Okay, now I'm going to try and be clever and just do this edge. without getting over spray at like this top part and obviously you can see I'm a professional and got away with just the right amount of paint it's definitely more luck than judgment so let me just hit this with a hairdryer Sorry about that. So let's have a look and see what we got, shall we? First impressions, very good. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Stop here, I'm gonna go back over to the other camera and show you on that one. Okay, so over here, let's have a look. So first impressions, pretty good, all right. Okay, I'm a convert, that's fantastic. Really like that. Perhaps could have put in a bit more of a pattern but generally, it's worked really, really well. Now over here, we might get away with it. I say I made a bit of a cock up over there. But you can see how it clings onto itself as it goes right over. A bit of overspray spray down there, but that's from the previous one. Okay, and then off the nose. Okay. I, all right, forget the color, because the color we're gonna play with, but 
I'm really, really impressed. We've got no oil marks on that whatsoever. It's clean, it's crisp. Once it was on, it was on. It wasn't gonna come off or anything else like that. It's down there. But if you can notice how smooth that is, considering I was worried about it actually, you know, sinking down flat and giving you too much of a hard edge, I'm actually thinking that is about where I'd want to be anyway. I don't think I want it any softer, okay? Or anything else like that. I am very, very impressed. I must admit. Now, the thing is, what happens when you roll this all up into a ball and try and use it again? That is the key question here. So we've got new stuff there, we've got old stuff here. Now, as we know, what happens with white tack, it absorbs into the putty. But will this? Okay. And this had quite a bit on there, so you still see it in there. So let's give it a good old roll up. The molecules all going together. Okay, give that a sec to go, and will it just look like that? That's the secret. Definitely am a convert. I do like this stuff. I would highly recommend everybody go and get some because once you know how to use it, i.e. forget trying to do the tack worm things because this stuff's a nightmare, it just sticks to itself. It's a hundred times more tacky than if you were trying to do it with something like white tack, for instance. This stuff you can put into sheets, put it down, it sticks, manipulate it, job done. Okay, now obviously if you were doing something 132nd scale Heinkel, you might wanna you know, either buy a couple of tubs of this stuff. Let's face it, it's gonna last you anyway. Uh, or you might want to rethink your idea. But for generally doing something like this, you could easily do a 132nd scale hurricane with this stuff. You've got enough to do it, okay? So definitely it comes in a highly recommended. So that's it, clever putty. You can find it on eBay, loads of places online for it. I'm not quite sure exactly how much it is off the top of my head, to be honest. Our Steve in the team sent me down this one to have a fiddle with uh, and a play with. But generally, I am very impressed. And we've got no oily marks on that paintwork at all. It's just a standard acrylic and all those things like that. So what I'm gonna do is do the back end of it now, tidy up a few little areas, um, and so you're gonna see how to, well it tidies up as well, okay, and everything else like that. And then what we can actually do is then get a flat coat onto that one, and then we can then think about some little bit of weathering down there perhaps, perhaps giving it a wash, but also we can get the decals onto it, and then we can go right the way through, getting it together, getting the weathering on, and all things like that. But definitely a bit of a plus. Okay, so we're pushing on really nicely, and as you can see down here, we've already got on with the deckling. Now, I've said it before, we said it in the reviews and everything else, Airfix's decals in the past were some of the worst you could possibly ever get. They were completely out of register, i.e. where the different colors are put on top of each other. They'd be so far out, they'd be illegible, basically. Nowadays, they're absolutely fine, really have a nice texture to them. The carrier film is to a complete minimum, and they usually settle down no problem at all with modern softeners and setters and things like that. So we've gone along on here, and also you'll find is when you put a little bit of color on, i.e., you know, Randall's things like that, it makes the color pop. So this color looks really nice underneath here. So we've got the Randall's done, we've done the trestle points and all the little warning symbols and everything else like that. One thing to point out down here, uh, I made a note of it whilst I was doing it, number 18, I'm sure this is number 18. It's not on the instructions, but I'm pretty sure it should go there as it does with the other one, okay? But it's not actually in the instructions. You get the decal, but it's nowhere to be seen. So I don't know if that's just a, an error. Um, generally working away round, as you can see, we've, we've put on the roundels. We're just about to show you. The only troublesome one is this one at the back, which I hope to show you in a moment when we get to it. Basically, I've placed it down. We'll get on there. Uh, right now, number, doo -doo -doo, we've got my little reference things here. We think, what is he? Number 10, which is this one here. Okay, this is quite an odd one because it's going to fit down at this point here. Trouble is that you could do with the lettering going on first and then that stencil goes on top of it so you can still see it. Otherwise, it will get completely covered, okay, by the, the stenciling. So we've got the actual ones down here. So we are, got the wrong ones, have we? Yes, sorry, we've got the wrong ones here. There's the one we want. We've soaked the wrong one, so that's the one we want. We want UPW. Okay, so we just pop him in soak whilst we do this one. Okay, so sticking him in soak, usual thing. I've just got a little bit of warm water down here, and we've got a micro set, just a splodge of it in the water. All right, so you can see it just down there. So we just take them out, stand them down there, 
and the same with these and stand them on there. I put them on my cutting mat, you see them just down here at the thing. There's plenty of water around it so they will sink down and go down. It's the same way I did all the little ones, you place them flat on the mat, that way they don't float off and start sliding in, you don't know which number's which. Okay, so this way we still do. So, a couple of things to obviously work out where it goes. The roundel itself is very hard to know where you're gonna position it on the aircraft, okay? So sometimes it's better to put the lettering in first and that gives you a cue, because all too often you'll get a panel line. Unfortunately, being a hurricane, we don't get a panel line, obviously, because of, or by its nature. But we do know the P comes down here uh, very flush up, okay? And so does the U. So if we can get these two down here, and they're just starting to loosen up now, which is nice. Okay, what I'm gonna do is get rid of the lettering off of there. Now, as I said, Traditional old decals, especially with airfix, you'd have a huge piece of uh, carrier film. Nowadays, they've done them exactly to the shape. So, normal thing, we've just got water. We're just gonna put a generous amount of water down on here. And the other thing as well, I haven't actually, we can get hold of this guy on a smaller brush. Might need a bigger brush. If I can get hold of him, we'll be all right. That. What we're going to do is slip it on. So we're just going to place it over and then drop it onto the actual area. So we can put up in. Okay. So then we can work him into position. Now, normally, as I say, I use um, uh, a clear coat right the way over this. I haven't. I've gone straight onto the paint. The paint is that satin smooth finish. I think we can get away with it without any problem with the silvering. So we're just seeing where the up is going to be. So we're just pushing in with a brush. I'm thinking, now I'm going to line the P up with the panel line. And then the U will just have to, wherever it sits, is going to be close enough. So what I've done is, I'm just looking at actually how it goes. The P, there's a panel line running just down here. So all we've got to do now is slide the entire thing down. Okay, so the P is going to be just on the bottom of where it joins. So what you've actually got is this panel in here. Hopefully you can see it. It's this panel here. Okay, so I'm lining it all up along the lines with that. Okay, so we're just trying to get the horizontal correct and we get the U is just a little bit back. But if we take some of the water out of it, so the P we know is in the correct place and we know the first part of the U is. Okay, so what we're going to do is soak the water out so the U then will hopefully go. Got a tiny bit of soil, so I've knocked the water off of the brush. Okay, and then we're just going to reposition and then push the water out of the brush just like that. We're happy how that's sitting, all right, so I've got no problem with that. So what we're going to do is going to grab the roundel. We're not going to fix anything anywhere yet. Okay, so same thing again. Place it down. Because you're on a nice satiny finish, you don't need too much water. Okay, now this guy is just literally going to pop in here, I do believe. Just trying to work it out. See, it goes very close to the P, and it basically goes onto our little runner that we've got running down the bottom there, okay, with the different color. So then we can roll them off. The thing is, with rolling it, one, you squish the water out, and secondly, you don't move the decal. If you just come in with perhaps like a paper towel and you give it a rub, what can happen is, grab a fresh one, you can actually move the decal from where you want it, okay? So just squish out all the water you can and clean up the watermarks that have gone a little bit too far. Next up, we just need the W, okay? So we're just gonna grab a little bit of water just to place it down there. Okay, and we're just gonna grab the W place it down, give them a bit of a rub over. Okay, then the W is gonna fall with the other one. Okay, something like that. Okay, then we can grab its markings. So we've got R4118. It's gonna go right over the green and it's gonna line up roughly with the top of the mid of the W. So it's gonna go in there something like that but needs to go slightly further back okay so we're just going to slide it back going to keep it on the green okay and then we're going to look across so we've got the w u p in there so once you're happy with all the locations of it give it all the rub down then you can come in same brush but i've just rubbed it on my trousers plenty of the setter 
starting from the middle rubbing to the outside okay and with your letters flood it nicely over the top okay and make sure you go right to the edges it's important to go to the edges because if you don't go to the edges it can't get under now you want to keep coating it until it is all flooded okay and then you sit back and wait and that can be the hardest point because you don't want to put your finger in it and all the areas because otherwise it might wrinkle up now these guys down here have been down here a little while but you might see they're puckering up a little bit on the rear so what we're going to do is recover those and sometimes they might need two or three coats to get them to be where you want them to be okay but don't start going in there with knives and start to prick them and all the rest of it until you're absolutely sure there's nothing else can be done so i'm just popping over some of the decals that i feel could do with a little bit more assistance so we're just going to flip over here these ones on the bottom are going down actually very nicely but this is their third coat then after that if that still hasn't happened after sort of six hours then we think about upping the game with something a little harder now this guy on the back here what we need to do is wrap him slightly round so the way we do that is going to grab a little bit of x20a this is acrylic x thinners tamiya thinners okay and we're just going to brush it just over the front edge actually we're going to do the entire decal on this one but only on the decal and then what we're going to do sorry grabbing the wrong stuff this is still the x20a thinners we're going to put a touch of it in between the two and then what happened is that will melt it together and then hopefully what happened is you can touch it and just dab it in and it will actually bend right the way around the corner and basically what you can do is you can use x20a when you get a stubborn decal won't bend it's your next armored layer up so we've just got this number 10 now to place which does go at an angle okay and then looking at the other instructions that's where i got confused it shows how it goes so it has the writing first aid it's for the first aid area so we're just going to grab it off of our sheet okay and then i do believe it's going to run diagonally down to the bottom of that plate okay so what we're going to do place it right there okay so it's in there literally just like that all right so then again back in with your setting solutions generous quantity and it's moved a little that's not a problem you can either do it with a brush or what you can do with like I'm gonna do is just move it slightly like that so there we go that's the deckling done very straightforward just time-consuming take your time with it and uh, just be mindful of what you're doing as well like then it could have been quite easy I could have stuck the wrong tail numbers on happened before trust me so keep a look at your references keep everything straight in your head how you want it to be i'm going to get the rest of those on to the other side once they're on and fixed down and we're happy what we can do then is overcoat it with a flat coat right the way over it because then we're going to come in and start to weather it so we're going to use the clay wash for the panel lines and the details like that then we're going to come into oils i'm going to really grime it down okay so been pushing on with this one uh, to be honest as you know I'm away tomorrow so I'm really trying to get this one we've basically got less than 24 hours because obviously we've got to edit and do everything I've roughly got around about working time six hours to get this one finished so I'm tending to do a lot of things at once which you know isn't a bad thing sometimes so generally looking down hopefully you can see the decals have actually gone down really really well to be honest some of them a little bit stubborn so i went in there with a little bit of x20a just to get them to settle down nicely and then we did our usual trick these under here come out particularly well we've got along and we just put a blade razor blade straight through the actual panel lines and then another coat over the top just to get them all to conform in and everything else like that so there we have one very good looking hawker hurricane okay so that's going down very well so what i'm doing by I means speeding ahead 
I'm going to put the gear on it, okay, but not all of it. So I'm not going to put the wheels on and everything else like that yet, but I'm going to put the legs all in and things like that. So we can then get another, basically a satin finish over it, I think I'm going to go with. Then we can put the wash on it in the morning. But yeah, we're now sort of 20 to 9 at night. So I'm going to spend probably another half an hour on this one. Then we can get that, you know, all important gloss coat down or a satin finish or a flat, whatever you want before the wash goes on. So the wash has then got basically 12 hours to dry before we come back in and then put that down off and we can carry on with the weathering. Now, interesting thing about this gear, um, it's actually a two-part system. So you've got it just here, okay, these are the legs. Now, when you look at the way it goes in, you think this is really nasty and it's not gonna work and all the rest of it, but I've put the other side in and it's really actually very good, so I can't totally complain. Basically, um, you know, amazingly, uh, if we get around the right way, uh, so what happens is you just literally push it in what would be a hole but it's not there then down in this side just down in here you might see there's a tiny little peg so if you line that one in first then you put the other one and it just sort of falls in there so you're thinking to yourself well that's not doing much but you sort of go with the, the theory that you know a bit of glue might just hold it all in there and amazingly it really does it's actually quite a good fit so you put that one in then you have to come in with this rear part which again you sort of just throw in there and hope for the best okay so we just pop that down the back and then this one down the front and then what you've got is a little pin just in the back of the undercarriage just here okay so what we do we're going to put a bit of glue just in the area and then that'll help it feed in like that to be honest it's gone in there really really well drop a glue just down here in this area and we'll do another one just on this leg and on that join and that's it amazingly so then you can put a tiny bit down in this side again make sure that this one is in properly so just push it down and across as is required all right and then that is it amazingly it's simple as that but actually it works really well so we've got a nice if we turn it the right way up square gear on that okay so the tail wheel that can go on in a moment to be honest i painted all of those black so we can get on with the other bits and pieces they've got one more little bar that's going to go across and in but i'm going to let those totally dry first before those go in now for the, uh, the smart ones among us you may be noticing this okay i'm wondering what it is and we've got this true metal stuff we don't usually use because we're doing loads of things i don't normally do on a model i thought i'd give this a whirl and to be honest i've actually done the metal leg whilst it's in position i can't do that one because now it's wet but i actually put it on this position this leg here whilst it's there so tiny bit on the brush brush it around put it all on there then we came in with this other brush long haired one and we just literally went over it to polish it up actually it's done quite a nice job it's a nice metal finish to it and everything else so i've done the insides of these as well so they've got a sort of metallic look obviously the outside's normal so it's used the uh, dark aluminium color on that one just to go round them and put all of those in so i'm not going to put these outer doors on yet because we can do those as a separate but i want to get the main gear down in there so when we're doing the wash and everything else we can speed things up by putting it down on its gear so we've got the tail wheel which is drying over here all right so we can actually pop this one in i suppose for the moment it's not going to hurt because again i'm going to come in with the a bit of uh, the iron on this and you can watch me do it okay so this guy is literally just going to fit in here like so there it is it should sit in there just like that all right so if you wanted to you could put him at an angle or something else we've done the hubs of those tires so we can have a look at see how they go in actually i'll scratch that one so forget that one for a minute but these are the that true metal hubs okay so actually we can put one of those in and they actually look pretty good i must admit quite happy with that drop a glue in there when it's pinned through i think that'll work really really well so from my point of view what i'm going to do now is let that dry just for a couple of minutes all right and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to give this thing an entire satin finish all over everything this way it'll give us a nice panel line wash it'll seal down the decals and everything else like that so then obviously it be like a medium grime effect going over this one then we're going to come back in with other weathering oils things like that uh, and pastels and things to really grime it up bring it down and give us that nice hawker hurricane look okay over to the spray bay really happy how it's all gone down there so what we're going to do is just going to give this a satin coat 
right over absolutely everything. Okay, just fill it all in. And just give it plenty over the decals because we need those to be nicely sealed down. Okay, literally over the entire thing. Hopefully the undercarriage will hold. Just gonna pop the old extractor on. Okay, just like that. So we're gonna leave that for a couple of hours, let it totally dry, come back in the morning, and then we can get on with the weathering. Okay, looking really, really good. Uh, as you can see down here, I'll just take the prop off. It's just me getting ahead of myself. I can get it off, there we go. Um, so as you can see, we've got a nice, shiny, glossy finish. Really happy with these decals. They really went down extremely well. By scribing them, it just makes it so much easier for panel line washes and things like that to keep that detail going and everything else. But hopefully, as you can see now, we are really looking the part. I don't know, now the roundels and that on, the colour doesn't look as bad as it was, but I still think this brown is a far too lighter brown. It needs to be a little bit darker, but that's something we can certainly do when we move on in the next stage when we're going to come in and weather the entire thing. So, first up, it needs a wash. The idea of the wash is it's gonna go in all the panel lines, especially on the underside to help break it up, make it look a lot more realistic, okay? And then with the further weathering, what we're gonna do with some oils and various things like that is to literally grime it up and give it that sort of nice look. So, usual thing with a wash, I'm gonna use the dark dirt, okay? Just gonna decant a little bit just into a, a cup. Okay, and then with a nice clean brush, okay? What we're going to do is pop along and we're just gonna brush this on, okay, down into all the panel lines. And if you find it doesn't go in, just give it a little bit of a rub like this, just sort of grind it in. Just make sure it goes in all those panel lines. Don't worry about the bubbles too much, that's no problem at all. It's just that you really wanna get it in all the, the panel lines to make sure you get a nice even coat as it goes over okay so we're just going to put them all in there grab a little bit around the front and the other thing as well because we're griming this in it's over a satin finish that um hopefully you will get some texture uh from the the actual wash so it will give it that sort of semi grimy look as well and that's the important thing so you're not trying to do a pin wash where you just go along but the idea is then you end up with it very much everywhere now i'm not going to do the wheel well because i'm going to do that somewhat separately all right so if we just grab it around the front end. Okay, now the idea with the dark dirt wash as well like this is that it's dark enough to show through the green and your darkest colors, whilst it's not so strong that it's gonna be like a black and give you that sort of all over, sort of artificial cartoony look to your paintwork, okay? By having a jet black line and all things like that. You don't need gallons of it, so don't go brushing it on for your life as if it's, you know, your life's depending on it. It just needs to be a nice even coat, preferably everywhere. Now, if you wanted to, you could airbrush this on as well. It's personal choice. Personally, I always prefer to put it on with a brush purely because then I can see where it's going exactly. When you're in with an airbrush, it tends to get into cockpits, wheel wells, uh, and obviously detail, air intakes, things like that, where perhaps you don't want it to go in. Okay, but just make sure you've got a nice even coverage absolutely over everything. Okay, so that's looking good. And that's why we've got it on its gear, so we can do it like that. Okay, so it's absolutely everywhere. Remember your leading edges of the wings, so it goes in the panel lines and your trailing edges, so it fills in all the gaps and everything else like that. And as you can see, you hardly use any. All right, so the last thing we want to do just for continuity is to make sure you do things like gear doors, so they're all weathered to the same extent. All right. That's the wrong one. That's the one we want. Okay. Uh, put it on now you could speed this up with a hairdryer and literally just pop over the top of it with a hairdryer to dry this down. The biggest thing is, is make sure this totally dries. Don't try and take it off when it's wet because all you're gonna do is suck it up and absorb it straight out of the actual panel lines and all the riveting detail before it's got time to stick in there. Once it's in there, it's in there, it's pretty tough stuff, all right? But the usual thing is over a gloss finish, it was just gonna be a panel line and rivet wash, i.e. everything that's engraved, it will stay in all the top surfaces, it will just wipe away with ease, okay? And then obviously you're gonna do a satin finish, you're gonna get somewhat grimy because it's going to get caught in the surface texture when it's caught in the surface texture 
you're going to be in a situation where it's going to leave a slight griminess to everything which is great for weathering if you really want to go to town and you want it to look very weathered then obviously put it over a flat coat but you are always going to leave around about 10 percent on there even if you try and wash it all out that's because it's getting caught in the textures of the paint and it physically cannot release it from the surface all right but as i said biggest secret is make sure that your base color is completely dry obviously if you've got a clear coat on with your satin flat or gloss finish make sure they're completely flat before you put this stuff on because it is a fluid it will rehydrate anything that's down below so this has had a coat of future on it has allowed basically just over 12 hours to dry completely dry now so then we can put this on but if you used to do it sort of 10 minutes after your clear coats on it could get caught in the texture of your paint so you just want to mindful of that so there we go we're going to let that dry it's going to take about 20 minutes totally naturally dry if you did want to speed up with a hair dryer you could do something else like that just remember to put it on a cool setting because again you don't want to put it on a hot setting on a hairdryer because you're going to soften the paint and then in the next stage when you're wiping this off because the surface of the paint's quite soft you're actually going to grind it in and it's going to get stuck okay and everything else so it's usually better just to let it dry the other thing as well don't worry about this thing drying it doesn't matter if it takes you know you leave it on here for a Two, two hours, 24 hours, 24 months. Just it will rehydrate and wipe away being clay based. But there we go, as you can see, it's all drying on here now. It doesn't take long at all, okay? And just think, and don't worry about if it sinks down to the lower areas and pulls up because they'll come away with ease.